The flying 15-year-old is still too young to drive the family car at home. He goes to school like other kids, but on weekends, he's become dirt track racing's teenager rager. I, I don't look at him, at him as grown-ups when I'm out there. I just look at them as competitors, and that's what they are. So I just do as good as I can do against them. So far, I've done really well. The youngster was one of 11 Americans in Perth this week for the $250,000 World Sprint Car Series, and he cleaned house in the Friday night preliminaries. Speed Gordon had definitely arrived. So far, all of them have been really nice to me. I haven't heard any complaints so far, so hopefully it'll keep going like it is. Your reputation, I guess, uh, goes in front of you. Yeah, and, you know, they, being 15 is really the only thing. I mean, if I wasn't 15, then it wouldn't be a big deal. I have not my first visit, so I'm going to the job, and uh, the driver's job, and this is our big two late tonight, Will Driver. Good evening, I'm Con Migro. On behalf of Brad Thompson, welcome to this inaugural 1987 World Sprint Car Championship brought to you by the America's Cup Festival of Sport. This meeting is a culmination of three spectacular nights of sprint car racing. We've had drivers from America, New Zealand, Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria, South Australia, Northern Territory, and plus the best drivers from Western Australia, featuring Barbagallo, Nash, the Cricky Brothers, Bradford, Matter, Foster, Francis, and a whole host of all. You're now going to see a part of Speedway history being made. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Australia's number one summer sport, speedway racing. Okay. Well, at the age of 15, I guess there's a lot of guys in Western Australia would love to be in this young fellow's shoes. Jeff, firstly, welcome to Western Australia. And tell us, how did you get into sprint car racing at such a young age? Well, uh, I really enjoy Australia, for one thing. I mean, it's great, the weather and everything. Right, right, it's pretty nice. But uh, getting into sprint cars... I think pretty much the only reason that I got into it is because there was another young young kid in the United States who had started racing sprint cars. And uh, I've always wanted to race sprint cars. I start off in go-karts and quarter midgets, which are just a really low scale uh, sprint car. And uh, I raced those for nine years, ever since I was five. So, uh, you know, sprint cars has always been, been there. I've always been to sprint car racing. And I always wanted to drive them, and when the opportunity came up, I took the chance. So uh, here I am. Can you remember your very first drive in a uh, V8 powered sprint car? It was uh, very exciting. Uh, really, it, it was pretty scary. You know, it, it, it really, I, I don't know how to say it, but it just, I didn't expect that much power. I mean, it, it really, you know, just, you got a lot of power and you don't, you don't realize it until you get in. Whereabouts are you from in America and uh, how long have you been racing sprinters? And tell us about some of the uh, the highlights of your sprint car racing career. Well, right now I'm in uh, Pittsburgh, Indiana, but I, we just moved there over the, the summer. And uh, I used to live in uh, California, near San Francisco area. <coughs> and uh, this is my third year in a sprint car. And uh, I've, the last season, I've done really well. I've many seconds, third, of course, top five. I just got in the race. I won two feature events this year. And uh, I had one track record earlier, but it got back at the end of the year. So it's getting better and better every year. Okay, well, I see the boys are starting to get ready now for the feature race just before you go. Perhaps you can tell us, obviously, you're anxious to win this big event here at Claremont, the inaugural 1987 World Sprint Car titles. Any other ambitions when you get back to the States? Oh, yeah, I want to keep going as far as I can go, win some outlaw features. This is definitely a really big deal to me, uh, being a world championship, and I'd really like to win this. I think tonight i got a pretty good chance. we got the car working really well. And uh, just in, in the U.S., there's so many races to, to get, attend to, and the purses are really, really big. 
and I'd like to win any of those. Well, Jeff Gordon, time to don the helmet and get back out there for the feature race. All the best tonight, young and for, uh, for the feature race, and all the best tomorrow for the all-important final for the world title. Twenty of the world's fastest drivers from America and Australia are just about to be sent underway for 35 laps. They're off and racing. Steve Brazier has gone sideways right in front of the oncoming traffic. Cars have gone left, right and centre. And uh, we've got action of plenty on the raceway. What a disaster for the start of the world title. We've got several cars with blown tyres. Steve Brazier went sideways on the main straight. That is the New South Wales driver. There he is on camera. Uh, Jimmy Sewells, that driver there, car number 75, has also blown a rear tyre. Oh, bits and pieces of race cars are being picked up. What a drama-packed uh, beginning to this world final. There is the 15-year-old uh, Jeff Gordon from America. I hope that his car is not badly damaged. There is Max Dumsney, the Victorian driver. Drama at the beginning of the 1987 World Sprint Car title. The drivers were racing before the officials had put the green lights on. It resulted in Steve Brazier from New South Wales going sideways on the main straight right in front of the 20 car field. The red lights have come on and will pick the 1987 inaugural World Sprint Car Championship back up at the restart. Okay. Drama out on the racetrack at the moment. The drivers are not obeying the officials' uh, orders. They are now getting into line at long last. And we could be getting this world final underway. We are, and this time it was a clean dispatch as they come off the end of the uh, main straight now, race into turn number one. And it's the West Australian driver, Ron Cricky, who moves into first place. And Alf Barbagello from WA, the hometown heroes, are first and second. The former seven times Australian champion, Gary Rush from New South Wales, has gone into third place. And the great news is that the young 15-year-old American, Jeff Gordon, is back in the race. He has uh, been able to repair the car, and Jeff Gordon's back in the race in about position number 10. But there is the race leader, Ron Cricky, the 1985 Australian Sprint Car Champion, and a former two times West Australian Champion on his home track, performing in front of a huge crowd, estimated to be between 18 and 20,000 race fans as history is unfolding before our very eyes. The inaugural World Sprint Car title, the best drivers from Australia, New Zealand and America have been competing over the uh, last three nights of racing and now this is the uh, culminating in the 1987 World Sprint Car title with Ron Cricky leading from Western Australia. Elf Barbagello in second place, then back to New South Wales 25. That of course is uh, Gary Rush, further back there to we'll try to pick that drive it up, could be uh, David Grants from uh, the Northern Territory, if that is so, that's a brilliant drive by him, or could it be uh, Danny Lososki, we'll try to pick that uh, competitor up, it is Lososki, Danny Lososki from USA, well what a tremendous uh, race it's being driven at the moment by Ron Cricky, car number 99 from Western Australia, he has cleared uh, right out now. He has about a five car length lead over El Barbagallo. And very shortly they'll be starting to lap the slower cars. Now this is where drama is uh, going to happen. There is no question about that because the lead cars are travelling considerably faster than the uh, cars that they're just about to come up to lap. There is the first car that is going to be put a lap down on. That is Laurie Sol Giovanni from the Northern Territory. And this is where the uh, lead could change. One Cricky leading. But Elf Barbagello is driving absolutely off the planet at the moment. He's well and truly up there in second place. In fact, uh, Ron Cricky's gone wide. He has allowed Elf Barbagello through. And also Gary Rush has moved up there. So Gary Rush has moved into second place. Ron Cricky has gone from first to third in less than a lap. Oh, drama unfolding before your very eyes. The inaugural World Sprint Car title for 1987. 
we see El Barbagallo from Western Australia in front. Gary Rush in second place. Back there to third place, car number 99, which is Ron Kriggy. But this race is a long way from over. There is uh, 25 laps remaining. 25 laps remaining, and now the race leaders are starting to lap the slower cars as Gary Rush moves into first place. Gary Rush from New South Wales, that was a beautiful piece of driving. He managed to stay all four wheels on the racetrack and he has now moved into first place. El Barbagallo into second. Then way back to Ron Crickey from Western Australia in third. Danny Lososki from America in fourth. Further back to Jimmy Sewells in fifth place. Further again back to the young uh, Northern Territory driver, that is uh, Stephen Arrigo. But this is absolutely uh, world-class sprint car racing. With the man on screen, Gary Rush, brilliant camera work there, as he now starts to move up on a slower competitor. So, so any moment, the West Australian champion, Lee Foster, isn't going to be lapped by Gary Rush. We'll pick them up as they come onto the main straight. There is Lee Foster. Gary Rush now starts to move up and he goes under him. Oh, this time he bounced off the curb. He had about two wheels on the grass. Hopefully for him, the stewards weren't looking, but Gary Rush still leading. Smoke starts to pour off the back tyres. And this is going to be a very crucial time indeed for the race cars because uh, once the tyres go off, this is the saying we have in Speedway, once those tyres go off, that means the tyre is completely bald and it cannot work, it cannot get the traction it needs to keep the car racing at high speed and uh, the car becomes very bad in the handling department and it starts to drift left, right and centre across the racetrack and uh, a driver can go from uh, well, chocolates to boiled lollies in less than a few laps and already smoke is starting to pour from the rear of car number 25. That is the huge big rear drive tyre, the tyre that uh, gives Gary Rush the traction he needs to keep this car in uh, A1 racing condition. Well, Gary Rush, our race leader, is coming up behind the American Shane Carson. The next car he'll be putting a lap on will be the American Rocky Hodges. So Gary Rush is driving a precision race at the moment and I cannot speak highly enough of the former seven times Australian champion. There he is, he's just passed Shane Carson. Now he is coming up onto the uh, rear of the blue car. That is uh, Rocky Hodges from Des Moines, Iowa in America. Gary Rush is just about to put a lap down on him. There he goes flying by the inside of Rocky Hodges. Now he has his uh, sights set on another slower car. The move over flag to the slower competitors given. It looks like Kramer Williamson from America is going to be the next driver who is going to be lapped by uh, Gary Rush. Well, just recently the America's Cup was lost here in uh, Western Australia. America reclaimed the America's Cup. It was a very sad day for Australia, but uh, gee, Gary Rush is flying the flag high for Australia because he want to make sure that the inaugural World Sprint Car title, the trophy, is kept here in Australia and the way that he is lapping these Americans is uh, treating this crowd of uh, 18 to 20,000 fans, most of which are Australians. They are enjoying every moment of this. Well, the caution lights have come on. We've got a car in the fence. It is the young... Uh, Northern Territory driver Stephen Arrigo, he has gone heavily into the fence and once again the red lights have come on. That means that uh, there will be a complete race stoppage. It is the young 16 year old driver from the Northern Territory. Stephen Arrigo has gone into the safety fence very heavily indeed, but it looks like he is okay. It looks like he is okay. That car crashed very heavily into the fence up there on the entrance to the main straight and that is extremely bad luck to the man who was holding down in about uh, fifth place the ambulance crew just racing to his attendance that is his father there with NT number one the, dry, the uh, person with uh, the hand on Stephen's helmet that is his father Charlie Arrigo well we certainly hope that that driver is not seriously hurt the crash helmet is being removed and looks like now we'll have to pick the inaugural World Sprint Car Championship up at the second restart. Watch out, mate. Come on, okay? Oh, I need the battery.
Huh? I'd be better, better The second restart now of the 1987 inaugural World Sprint Car Championship. It's underway with just 14 laps remaining. After a red light stop which has involved the race crash of Stephen Arrigo, but uh, Arrigo has been allowed to restart in his uh, former position just prior to the crash. Well, action of plenty happening out on the raceway at the moment as drama is unfolding. This history-making Speedway event being staged here at Claremont Speedway in Western Australia with the New South Wales driver Gary Rush leading in second place is the uh, West Australian driver car number 77 Elf Barbagello. Then we go back to the American Danny Lososki in third position then back to the American that's uh, Jimmy Buckweed Sills further back there to the Australian champion Brett Lacey driving a very well judged race indeed. Well, this is absolutely world-class sprint car action. You cannot see better. And this huge crowd tonight of 18 to 20,000 people well and truly being entertained by the glamour division of Speedway. This half-million dollar production with uh, just 10 laps remaining. And it's Gary Rush, New South Wales leading. The local hero, Elf Barbagello in second place. Danny Lososki in third from America. Then we go back to fellow American, that is of course uh, Jimmy Buckwood Sills, and further back to the Australian champion Brett Lacey. Action of plenty on the raceway at the moment. As we see, car number 25, Gary Rush, still leading. There he is on screen as he powers through turn number three and four, goes under Laurie Sol Giovanni of the Northern Territory, puts another lap on him. So Gary Rush driving a precision race. Oh, the lights have come on once again. Kramer Williamson has gone up against the fence at the exit of turn number two. The yellow lights are on. Kramer Williamson from America has spun just out of uh, turn number two. There he is on screen. It looks like he's okay. And that is great to see. And that is a battle-scarred race car. You can see Kramer Williamson has borrowed a wing from a fellow competitor because his wing was damaged in a race accident last night. But it looks like the race for Kramer Williamson. This world title is well and truly over. As the caution lights come on, the drivers line up with just eight laps remaining. And again, we'll pick the 1987 America's Cup Festival of Sport World Sprint Car Championship, this inaugural event being held here in Perth, Western Australia, back up at the restart. Restart number three underway with just uh, eight laps remaining of this world title. And it is incredible that we still have 19 cars on the raceway. Well, the action continues down the back straight with Gary Rush still in a commanding position. The West Australian driver, Elf Barbagello, is in second place. Danny Lasoski from America is in third. Then back to uh, Jimmy Sewells, followed by the Australian champion Brett Lacey. Further back to George Tatnell from New South Wales. Then the American driver Rocky Hodges. That's the uh, white, uh, the uh, blue car, I should say. Further back there to the Ameri uh, to the uh, Victorian driver Max Boland, car number 20. But our race leader, car 25 from New South Wales, a man who has mastered just about every race track in the land with just five laps remaining five laps away from becoming the inaugural world sprint car title and just two years ago on this very track while in this same position he blew a rear tire the rear tire of his race car let go it cost him the australian title and no doubt that uh, gary rush could be thinking that uh, if the horrors set in again the same thing could happen Let's certainly hope not because he is now just three and a half laps away from becoming the 1987 inaugural World Sprint Car title holder. There he is, Gary Rush, a brilliant drive in second place, El Barbagello, and uh, Barbagello is also driving the race of his life. There he is on the screen and the local crowd is absolutely going crazy because they know that uh, El Barbagello has done everything in his power to try to win this World Sprint Car title. There he is, car number 77, and uh, he will not be disgraced at all. But our race leader, 
has driven a superb race and he comes up now with just over one lap remaining so Gary Rush has one lap to go and uh, there he is as he races down the back straight for the final time the checkered flag is coming out this is the double checkered flag it is coming out now to Gary Rush of New South Wales in second place will go to El Barbagallo from Western Australia in third position Danny Lososki from America in fourth position goes to car number 75 from America that is Jimmy Buckwilt Sills followed by the Australian champion then we go back to George Tatnell looks like Rocky Hodges was the next best then back to either Max Boland from Victoria or Shane Carson and the time for the eight uh, for the last eight laps the wins time was 217 41 but the 1987 inaugural world sprint car champion is car number 25 from New South Wales Gary Rush and now for the official presentations and what a great drive and a very very proud man it's over to Con Migro well ladies and gentlemen there's no doubt about this man no matter where he goes if it's America New Zealand, anywhere in Australia, he was without doubt, as I said before we introduced him tonight, he is the finest sprint car driver this country has ever produced. He has won seven Australian titles, and then tonight, to cap off a wonderful Speedway career, he is the 1987 inaugural World Sprint Car Champion, Mr. Gary Rush, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that was just incredible, Gary. That was just amazing. Congratulations. Tremendous effort. Gary, a guy that came up, he said, you're going to crack the sub-15, so a consolation of an extra 50 bucks. I'm sure that'll help you. But, Gary, it's been a great privilege and honour to uh, invite you to come and race at the finest speedway track in this country and probably the world in my book. But uh, you've done it very proud once again. Congratulations. Thanks very much. Well, to win a race like this, you know, it's, uh, as Con said earlier, that it's capped off a great career and, uh, you know, I don't know how long I'm going to go, but I'm enjoying racing at the moment, so we'll keep on enjoying it and uh, if while I keep winning, I'll, uh, I guess I'll keep on enjoying it, but, you know, people don't realise how much work goes into cars like this and uh, we've made it, changed motors twice in two days and uh, we went back to the, we run one motor on Thursday night and we thought well we found a small problem with that and then uh, we changed another one for last night so then we went back to another one but the guys that done all that work I owe it all to them because without them and all the other pit crews throughout Australia you know there would not be any racing because there's a lot a lot of work goes into these cars and I thank all the pit crews back thank you very much and I thank all the people for coming and I thank my sponsors Ivan Walker, Winfield and Adjip Boyles and the Western Australian Government for putting on it and Con Migro, the promoter, for putting on a, a very ambitious show like this. I thank you very much. Yeah, we are the champions of the world and there they are. Numbers one, two and three in the world. Gary Rush, the world sprint car champion. The greatest sprint car champion in the world today. Alf Barbagallo, second. Danny Lasoski, third. The next event on Australian Speedway is the Mick Tilby Invitation Sprint Car Race. And Mick Tilby, who has been a director at Claremont Speedway here in Western Australia, he's been the chairman of directors for over 40 years, has handpicked these drivers to compete in a special 10-lap event. They are racing for in excess of $1,000 in prize money, and they race down the back straight with the... Uh, Victorian car number 75, Bill Burrows. In actual fact, he is a South Australian, but uh, the car that he is driving is from the John Sydney workshop, and John Sydney is from Victoria, and uh, thus that's why Victoria 75 is painted on the uh, tail of that machine. But Bill Burrows from South Australia is leading. In second place, we'll try to pick him up as they come onto the main straight. It could be the uh, American driver. Jimmy Sills, it is, and uh, well, Buckwheat, Jimmy Sills has certainly been in, uh, involved in some tremendous uh, racing tonight, but we've got action on the main straight, Lee Foster has turned it around, that is the current state uh, champion here in Western Australia, the other driver involved in the accident was Rocky Hodges from America, in, uh, from Des Moines, Iowa in America, but it looks like both drivers are uh, going to be climbing out of the race car, Lee Foster is, 
and that's great to see. Lee Foster, in fact, was involved in a very nasty accident earlier this week while practicing, preparing for the World Sprint Car title in, uh, in which he received suspected back injuries, but he has recovered to uh, take part in this very history-making night down here at uh, Claremont Speedway in Western Australia. We'll pick the invitation race back up at the restart. The restart now for the Mick Tilby Invitation Race with the South Australian Bill Burrows off the front row as they come onto the main straight now and they're under racing condition and uh, the front inside tyre of Bill Burrows' car is very loose indeed. That could give him uh, some uh, problem as the race goes on as they charge down the back straight now. We'll keep an eye on uh, Bill Burrows' car number 75. Meanwhile, we've got the American from Sacramento in uh, the United States, that is Jimmy Sewell's up in second place and the driver up in third place is the 15 year old from America, Jeff Gordon. This man has certainly, well this uh, teenager has certainly been one of the crowd favourites of this world title and just have a look at the battle going on for first and second. Jimmy Sewell's working overtime behind uh, car number 75. That's the yellow car 75 because the race leader in the white car 75 is Bill Burrows from South Australia driving the Victorian entrant in this uh, world title. That's the uh, John Sydney car but meanwhile we've had a race change because Jimmy Sills has slipped straight into the race lead and I would say that Bill Burrows is feeling the effect of an ill handling car because the front tyre of car number 75 is not handling well. It's uh, worked itself very, very loose indeed. Well, Jeff Gordon looks like he's going to move up into second place. There he goes under Bill Burrows. And that problem with the steering on board car number 75, the white car, would certainly be making Bill Burrows work overtime behind the wheel. We have the West Australian driver. That's Ian Bonza Bradford will just move up now and pass Bill Burrows. There they go as they race onto the main straight now. So our race leader from the US of A, is car number 75, that's the yellow car of Jimmy Sewells. Right behind him in another yellow car is car number 16, that's the young 15 year old Jeff Gordon as they power onto the main straight now. So the Americans certainly got uh, the whole shot over the rest of the field in this event because Jimmy Sewells is driving a very well judged race. So is the uh, young teenager in second place, Jeff Gordon. In fact, Gordon is now starting to close the gap with just six laps remaining. Six laps remaining in this Mick Tilby invitation race. They're racing for something like $1,500 in prize money for this one race. And we have Jimmy Sills just out in front, but Jeff Gordon is closing. Well, the teacher and the apprentice could best describe these two drivers. Jimmy Sills is the teacher. He has uh, been driving sprint cars for many years. He is one of the most experienced on the American racing scene. The, the uh, teenager in second place, there he is, car number 16, has only been racing sprint cars for the last 10 months. And we've got a race and a half on our hands with about uh, just under four laps remaining now. And it's Jimmy Sills just out in front, but have a look at Jeff Gordon. He's starting to close the gap. There is now only about two car lengths between uh, Jimmy Sills and Jeff Gordon as they come onto the main straight. Three laps remaining now. So the pressure well and truly being applied to Jimmy Sills by the young 15 year old Jeff Gordon. Down the back straight now. Well, Jimmy Sills managed to uh, kick away something on that last lap. And there is now about five car lengths uh, between first and second. Two laps remaining. Ian Bonza Bradford's gone into third place. Then back to uh, Danny Lasoski, car number 12. Further back there to Bill Burrows. But the action is uh, first and second as the cars move out of turn number four onto the main straight with one lap to go and it's the American Jimmy Sauls in second place Jeff Gordon while well, they're racing for the checkered flag now and uh, Jimmy Buckwheat Sills moves out of turn number three and four goes to greet the double checkered flag and it's going to be Jimmy Sills from the United States first in second place will be Jeff uh, Gordon, also from the United States. Then back to car number six, the former West Australian champion Ian Bradford. In fourth position was the American Danny Lososki. And the win's time for the 10 laps in the Mick Tilby Invitation Race, just coming up on screen, was 3.52.60.
It's time for the B feature. Boy, Steve, we got some heavy hitters on the front row. Rick Unger from Indianapolis, Shane Carson, one of the good runners, Danny Smith, Bob East. Oh, boy. I'll tell you what, if uh, our man, the Wolf, can make his way through this field, Keith Kaufman, from way in the back, it'll be one of the major feats in sprint car racing history. There's Jack Hodenschild. Uh, this field is just dotted with heavy hitters, Steve. Great field, really. And to find Doug Wolfgang, well, that is going to have to continue to roll to just about there. He is in row number 11, dead last, on the outside of the very last pair of cars, the number 29 car. And we're coming around for a start as they come out at turn number three, headed into turn four. That is usually where they see that first hint of great, and the throttles are down. The B feature underway. And the big pressure race for Doug Wolfgang has already started, Steve. He has passed the 2H car, the black machine of Andy Hillenberg, also the 1J white car of Jamie Moyle, and right there he goes around the 6M red car of Tim Munz, and look at the wolf, he is on a howl. He is, as he threads his way through traffic, but the leaders right now, number 10, Shane Carson. The 880 car of Keith Coffin, the black of Jeff Gordon, the 40 machine, that's 6th and 7th respectively. Doug Wolfgang continues this incredible charge. His next target, the 12 car, Bob East, the black automobile, as Wolfgang moves under him to take over seventh spot. Well, he has got seventh and now looks for more. In the sixth position, the 40 car, the black machine of Jeff Gordon. Can he hold off Wolfgang? Can anybody hold off Wolfgang? That's the big question right now as Wolfgang goes high. Gordon low, right in front of him, Keith Kaufman in the 880 car. Kaufman and Gordon holding him off briefly, but there he goes by Gordon on a high side.